Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. And I'm Ring Ru. Hello, hello, hello. And, uh, of course, this is Steel Division, as we all know. This is the lovely map of Omaha, and this division, I believe, Rang, this is, um, the European Veterans, isn't it? Indeed, it is. Okay, so who do we have today? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have ourselves Her Robert as the second French armor division. Very happy seeing those guys out in the field. Mm -hmm. And on the right-hand side, we have Gonzo as 91st Laughland. Duh. <laughs> okay, so... But, no, no, of course, with the, with the Paris, we have all that kind of mess going on here. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess here's my question, as always. The second Blinde is not exactly one of those troops you think, oh my gosh, these are heavy hitters immediately. But the 91st Lufthlanda, I mean, would you really say that this is lightweight here? Or give me give me a weight class idea. Uh, in terms, okay, so you can make some pretty good pushes early on with your light vehicles, with like the Greyhounds and mm -hmm. Wolverines, etc. This isn't really ideal Wolverine territory mm -hmm. for her, Robert, as it's all rather close range and it's not army you have to worry about mm -hmm. early on. So it's going to be more focused on those M8 Greyhounds and Stuart tanks really do more of the heavy hitting. Uh, Leon's got a Greyhound up north and a Stuart down south. But same time for Gonzo. I mean, Gonzo has himself Pack 36. I hope he has Pack 36s on his deck because they'd be perfect in this matchup on this map as he have the close range capabilities to, uh, you know, pretty much knock out all the tanks. And off we go and knock her. Yeah. Exactly. He's can't playing. Beautiful. Oh, I wasn't even. I didn't even see the Piper Cub. Oh my gosh, this has really been making it into the meta recently, hasn't it? Yeah, we're seeing it every now and again. I mean, it's it's always like a risky maneuver, as it's like what sixty five points, like it's mm -hmm. fifty points, for like a recon plane where you could be buying like another ground unit that can shoot stuff. But sometimes information is more important than bullets, and the recon plane, especially early on, there's not really any AA on the field, can really give you that yeah, advantage. No, it's kind of interesting to me. We are going to see a lot more veterancy being utilized by the Lufthlanda mm -hmm. to the north and to the south. In the center part of the field, though, we're not seeing a whole lot. Ooh, okay, half-track already going down. Vaulty Gears are going to get crushed. Yeah. But it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of real um, oomph, should we say, in the center part of the field for the 91st. Just lots and lots of air, air such troop and spam. Yes, it's just the yes, air troop and spam to really just hold the ground per se. He's really doing his major assault up north as he's breaking through Reversats, Falchagers, and it's a pretty good uh, matchup. Gonzo, his Falchagers are going to do very well in these open ground engagements as the French really have nothing infantry rise that can match up. Not until later on where he can get some like LMG rifle troops, but even then it's just, you don't match with Falchagers. That's certainly true. I'm surprised his Pack 36 has not really been deployed a little bit more aggressively. I'm sure he was terrified. That I might have gotten wounded or forced to fall back. Yeah. But I'm not sure I really like it being forced to, uh, to, you know, slump it through the woods. It doesn't make, that doesn't do you yeah. very much. And that Greyhound's in a pretty good position to just give a uh, fire support on the units. And they've got Flamethrower Troop going for the SS Troop. And the SS Troop can get the kill, surprisingly. And, um, yeah, Gonzo's managing to break through. If he can knock out that Greyhound. Yeah, I'm definitely doing runders, but I don't think it's going to happen. His Abfra is a bit too far away, and the Pack 36 isn't in the ideal position at the moment, especially with the smoke. An early investment into planes, actually, over here for the second blind day. That Spitfire coming in just to strafe the ground. Yeah, okay. Now, and of course, the, we can we have the, the ability of God Vision here. Um, the two Flamin, wow, flamethrower troops over here for the French down to the south, could they have been better used someplace else? I mean, to uh, a certain extent, you have to know as a French you're going to get that town. Uh, I must be rather surprised first off that you got the two-man flame for a troop, because people usually take the uh, pioneers instead for like the six-man run in the infantry slot. So maybe he's getting his guys instead to save some infantry slots. I I don't know. I think it's just good defensively per se. But the run in like the southern middle area, he's gonna get ranked as his two foul shaker dude, and they have a much higher veterancy advantage on him. The one in the town now is in a pretty good position, you know, if some infantry try to rush in, you can just burn them away. Like keep an ant at your house, but instead of using ant off you just get a bloody flamethrower. Apparently they do things up differently up in Canada, but I'll yeah. I'll take your word for it. It doesn't work well because all the houses are made out of wood in the summer. But in the winter, it gets even worse because we have to like 
rebuild our houses into igloos. Ooh, and well, and the moose fur definitely lights up a lot faster, too. Exactly. exactly. Uh, M8 does go down. I think that was, in fact, from... That wasn't the Opfair, was it? Yeah, that was oh, the, no, uh, the Pack 36. I, I was going to say. Okay, there's that line of sight. Yeah. Um... So I might have to eat my words in terms of the positioning of that Pack 36 and kind of hoofing it in. Um, but, uh, you're suggesting that maybe the French are going with a little bit more of... Well, you're sacrificing slots and the support to bring in instead for the inf instead of infantry, you're saying, yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, I mean, he's got Navy up north, which are pretty decent. I mean, they're gonna do well against the Earth's Troop, and they just have the veteran sheet. But, um, still, I think, I think for her robot up north on Mortar Peach would definitely do him wonders. He's doing pretty good with the Spitfires, giving good fire support for his, uh, ground units. But he definitely needs a bit more oomph down in the northern sector to really take his back. He does have the half tracks as well, which will prove to be rather good if they don't get Panzer Shranked. Well, it's amusing enough to me to see this up there. Uh, one squad already... Okay, I thought they used a lot more than perhaps they had already. Mm -hmm. I mean, really amusing to me have they been able to get off all six of their rounds. And wow, one up north has two kills right now. Not too bad. Yeah. And perhaps appropriately, the Spitfires are going after the anti-tank because that might be the only real threat they have to deal with. Exactly. If he can knock out the adverse and the half tracks can just shit here all day and lay down machine gun fire. It's rather a bit of a shame for her, Robert, for his side, as he hasn't managed to make any major breakthroughs. It's really a phase is the uh, make it or break it, so to say, for the French. But I don't know, at the same time, Gonzo's going to be running out of infantry along with the French as once his Fauchegas are depleted. It's really just her sense troop and spam. So I, I think this is going to be a pretty even matchup, even into c phase to be entirely honest. Well, and that's totally fair to say. I think I might have to disagree a little bit, though. I mean, the fact that Gonzo has not been really giving ground, he's been getting that plus one, even if only for a couple of minutes at a time. Um, Blinde does... Uh, you're saying it's a not really make or break for them, that they, they continue to be strong, but you also, at the same time, they can't really play to their strengths on this kind of tight, close-quarters map. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I'd say for Blinde, it's definitely a more open map, is, is a much better choice early on. Even if you've got Stewart and Greyhounds, which are good CQC fighters, having the Wolverine in A phase and being able to use their 1.2km range advantage compared to all the Axis 1km tanks that you usually get in A phase for Axis, mm -hmm. definitely pays off. And there, there's no point in even getting a Wolverine in this sort of matchup in this area, as there's just no, there's, there's no use for it. And it's just kind of a major. You know, needs unit. Yeah, her robot can't exactly take advantage of that at the moment. Agreed. It's because of the map. Um, it is interesting to me to also note that while we're seeing another Stuart actually coming into the north, the French are being heavily, heavily outgunned here, and outnumbered yeah. for that matter too. That doesn't, that never seems to happen from an Axis faction. <laughs> He's always outnumbered when fine against us as trooping. <laughs> I suppose that's true. I suppose that's true. I am also surprised we're not seeing any kind of anti-aircraft being brought out by Gonzo. I'm guessing he doesn't have any in a phase. That's going to be my guess. Some some 91st Lofflander players don't. But the real question is, is uh, Gonzo going to burn out twice as fast? I mean, you've already seen Christ, you've quite a few Fauchega troops on the field. You've got one, two, three, four, uh, five Fauchegas already deployed out of a possible eight. Mm -hmm. And once those eight Fauchegas are down, that's all of Gonzo's, like, really good infantry. He can get some pioneers later on and whatnot. But, you know, it's not, they're not Fauchegas. The Fauchegas are really the, uh, the awesome unit for Gonzo. So is he going to be able to be, you know, conservative with him and make him a... Uh, lost the majority of the match that's a better question by the same token though the french i do know they do pick up some more nuevas and i mean there are definitely faulty gears here and there but will the vaulters be enough we are going to uh, see that mortar piece here that you were talking about before well, finally he definitely needs that mortar pieces yeah that's pretty much just gonna help shut down his uh northern assault for now is those 60 mm -hmm. millimeter mortars when one thing foul don't like and that's uh being shot up by indirect artillery I'll tell you something that, that uh, mortars don't like, though, and that's being in the range of a light tank. <laughs> Fortunately, it's a crappy French light tank, so it's only one HE damage that he has to worry about. But it's in a, I think he's dropping some smoke to try and block line of sight. You know, really, he should maybe just try and... No, he's dropping mortars on the French tank, trying to give his Stuart a bit of fire support, but the Stuart's going to be losing out on that engagement, it seems, morale rise. 
I am certainly surprised. I mean, the French assault has completely bogged down in the north. Down yeah. in the south, I think he's doing exactly what he should have been doing the entire time, albeit with a little bit less investment. Yeah. Um, and at least he is bringing back in that territory control in the center part of the map. Mm hmm Just getting... I mean, still not at the 0-0, uh, zero, zero, and Gonzo still getting that slow plus run, but I think the center part would definitely be a good area for her Robert to take advantage of. As it's northern area, I mean, he's just choke pointed into that crossroads, and unless he gets like an, I think he's gonna need another mortar, or the full mortar will actually be getting some hits on the foul shakers, he's not gonna be able to break through on that northern sector. He still has a recon plane flying around, he's just been, you know, popping the entire time. I was say he's uh, built a few, because he can, he sees a pretty good amount. He sees the pack guns and. You know, infantry movements as they move from tree line to tree line. So that's been going, that's, you know, pretty good play from her role, but that recon plane has definitely helped out so far. I'm happy he sees that because he sees nothing else across the <laughs> entire rest of the map. Yeah, though. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, he's completely blind down. So, he doesn't have any recon units yet, right? But at the same time, all the Gonjo stuff is pretty much in towns and forests, and this is infantry, so. Very easy to keep hitting. And down south, just looking at it, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a defensive line and a half. It's yes, like a it secret is. secret line. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hang up our Ross in there someday. Oh, that's what the British troops keep saying in this game. That also seems accurate. Okay, we are into phase B now. The planes are still pretty hot and heavy over here for Herr Robert. Why is it the Gonzo's not really deploying some of his own air power? I'm not entirely sure. I'm guessing he doesn't. I think he just doesn't have any planes around TR in A phase. That's my guess. He may have like a B3 in A phase, but with all the Spitfires flying around, probably not a good idea. But yeah, now he's getting some anti aircraft yep. pieces. Just some uh, 37 mils, most likely. Mm -hmm. And a Stu 42. Yeah, I, I. that's great for all of the anti infantry. And frankly, the Franks are not going to be bringing on in. I think anything that's really use... I don't know, I don't, I don't say it's entirely useful to take, in, take him out, but it, it kind of feels that way. Yeah, I mean, even, even though Stu-42 doesn't have, you know, AP ammo, it, against, like, Greyhound and Sturridge, it can stun them up rather efficiently, so it's still a pretty good choice up north. And he's, as you see, he's just positioned, you know, long-range shots down the road, and if he can... Uh, I was looking at the line of sight for the road, but he's going to get rather close to be able to shoot the uh, French units on the other side. Well, the stovepipes, of course, are also bringing their firepower in every yeah. single direction, and still not really doing a whole lot. Yeah. And the Panzer Abwehr squads are just continuing to claim kills. They have a really, really good use of these Panzer uh, Abwehr squads all around. I mean, this is this is complete Panzer Strike territory. Mm -hmm. Yo, he just loses two of them, yo, back to back. So that's a rather big loss, and knocking out another half track. And knocking out his half track is very important, as that's really, you know, the French, like, infantry firepower. Yeah, they kind of like the machine guns. Mm -hmm. So having those half tracks around to give the machine gun cover in fire is uh, pretty important. And finally, the stovepipes are getting some good hits. And if he can stump the Fouchagers, then he can make some good territorial progress. But now, no, okay, Phase B, what's going to come in here for Gonzo to kind of hold the line? Is this time to bring the Pioneers, or is that too aggressive a unit? I think he's actually getting, bringing a Pioneer right now to help out, and he's definitely going to need some more infantry defenses mm -hmm. up north. But I think for Gonzo, maybe like a proper artillery piece, he does have access to the rest True. of the artillery, which will yes. help out a lot, dealing with the 60mm mortars. Whoa. Whoa. Sorry, the Stu 42 gets just, he's plopping around. I did not even think he could see that mortar from there, but he is. Oh, damn. That's tight. That's absolutely tight. I'm sorry, but you're saying Russian artillery pieces. Please continue. You got, like, Russian artillery pieces. I mean, he's got really forgotten, so he should be trying to focus and getting back to air supremacy. Is that really is 91st Lothlander's strength with the rocket plane spam, and of course, mm -hmm. B Freeze. B Freeze on this map would be wonderful for Gonzo, as. You don't have much direct line of sight, so being able to, you know, pop your Sturridge and Shermans from the air definitely makes your life much easier in the anti-tank department. Of course, you do have to break through the Spitfires to get there, though, is a problem. Yeah, but once you do, you can pop it like it's hot. And he is quite good at getting that can opener. Mm -hmm. Um, continues to be absolutely no fighting down to the south. I think we've lost a couple of random air such troops. Actually, no, never mind. <laughs>
this, bo both sides are like, you know, we're just going to set a truth down south, you know, a little Christmas truth. We let the guys have no off to all the fight, and we're just here for, we're just here to get paid. Yo, just remember, the North remembers. <laughs> um, but you're absolutely right. I mean, the French continue to be choke pointed. This is a constant, constant issue. Uh, pioneers are not quite close enough to start throwing their, you know, Kibotteledungs over here at the Voltigeurs. But, um, do they really need to? Not really. I mean, the Pioneers of Machine Gun is usually enough to beat a lot of the French infantry in long-range engagement. I'm sure this is more of a shorter-range engagement, so the Voltigeurs managed to get their, you know, rifles onto fire, and mm -hmm. so the Pioneers are just going to be forced to retreat. Cause the nice thing about the French infantry is a lot of them do have as own um, M1 carbines. Which, they're not, they're not STG-44 material by any chance, but they're still pretty decent in the 200 meter range. There's just, you know, a bit of extra edge compared to the Axis. Okay, this Panzer up fails? No, I think it's still just a tiny bit out of range. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is... So, he's playing with fire right there. And here comes the German planes in. Here's the one B3. is an ME-109. And here comes all the Spitfire. So, that B3's not making yep. it out. No, he's not. You animals. Yeah, that's a little bit ballsy, yeah, because he didn't, he didn't manage to, like, keep back any... But he had one Spitfire plane. I mean, Messerschmitt plane. Mm -hmm. But, um... He definitely sort of killed one or two Spitfires in an aerial battle beforehand before engaging in that, because that was, uh... That was, that was a bit ballsy. And I did not pay him off using that B3 like that. No, I mean, he did at least kill one of those stewards, and that yeah. is a decent kill, just not enough to make it worthwhile. Exactly. Now, we do have a Sherman up north now, and there's a bloody freestyle run as well, so... Yeah, really the French are starting to the mass and armor, but they're definitely going to need a bit more of the infantry to really help his uh, forest fight. To just try and clear the raid. But once the infantry can move in and spot all the scary units, the uh, French tanks can return fire. I think I would like to see Gonzo kind of extend his southern troops a little bit more to pick up the slack in the north. Yeah. Uh, it is fair to say that the French themselves are able, by the way, that, that last artillery strike is going to come in on top of the Flak 36, but it looks like he's going to get it out more or less in time. Nah, never mind. Yeah. Um, ooh. And... Ooh. Pat, up for a squad. He's gotten five shots. I think he's had four kills. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, that's, that's perfect. This really good play uh, from Gonzo of his Ampera. That's, that's really on point, Ampera play. I mean, I, I love that just as much as you do. Yeah. What I was trying to save, though, at the same time, for giving you know, the pop off a little bit of uh, comfort equipment that's going on over here in this room. But um, I, I would like to see the southern troops extend a little bit more. You can see, even with the French being more mobile, their major effort has been constant, constant, constant over this one area. Yeah. Got to do something to kind of do, to bring it back. Even all the reinforcements are coming in the you know the what the highest third of the map, maybe? Yeah, it's really just, he's trying to make that one breakthrough up north. We do see a B3 being brought in, but Gonzo, he's not going to make the same mistake twice, and he's going to pull that back, so that's, you know, didn't really do much. I mean, he's going to be able to reload rather quickly, but still, it's a little bit of a race there. Well, maybe he did it so that way he could draw the Spitfires out, and since yeah. the Spitfires are going to be kept out, maybe he can turn that back around somehow? I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe if you rate for Spitfires or Evac and the um, yes. B3, that's usually like a pretty good idea. But uh, still, he needs to, he needs to get in that anti-air game and start knocking out a few Spitfires here. Oh yeah. Agreed, agreed. But up north, we got uh, yeah, finally, finally seen some sappers, and this is exactly what her Robert needs up north. Sappers, wonderful infantry unit. I mean, you got the SMGs, you got the semi auto rifles, you got a bazooka, you got the satchel charges. They're really just a lovely all round unit for the French. And in this northern area, they're going to do absolute wonders. And all for the low, low price of a billion and a half points, but uh, at least at least they are worth their weight in pointage. Yeah, I mean, the, the bazooka alone. I mean, the bazooka and Panzer Strike combo is. I mean, the anti tank and anti infantry. A little bit shocking when you think about it, but yeah. you know what? The French don't have a whole lot of fun, you know, positive things in the first place, so they have to be nice. Yeah. Um, and we're just continuing to see more and more 36s being brought on in. And yeah, okay. This is not too shocking at this point. Whoa! Stu 42 dials up a half track from, I would say, max range, but that's not even fair. No, that was way less than max range. 
Yeah, that was pretty tight angle once again. This C2 is finding some pretty good uh, trick shots, as I like to think of it. But yeah, Gonzo, he's just kind of running out of steam up north. All his Fauchagas have pretty much been killed. I mean, he's got like another one being brought in. Sorry, I think he's almost out of Fauchagas at this point in time. Quick B3 strike. Um, I don't think the Spitfires are nowhere to be found. They were staying off station for a little bit longer. ME109 is there. He's making the run at the Sherman. He's going in. It's gone. It's out of there. And oh, B3 pulls away. He might be able to make it out in time. Yeah, he's he's, he's pretty much safe and sound. And as we see, because the Spitfire's evac earlier, they're still in their refuel time. Mm -hmm. So the B3's got a nice clear shot. So that was, a good, that was a good time to call in the B3. And the Stug 3 is being brought in as well. Oh yeah, that's going to definitely help out. In his, uh, he, he definitely needs it to try and fend off the French tanks. And also, like, the Stug's going to be pretty good. They can just kind of like hold that one road choke point that has decent mm -hmm. armor against the Sturge and the Greyhound. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the one the Stu's really just holding the ground at the moment. And yeah, her Robert just needs to get, you know, some more infantry, some more artillery support to try and break through. If he can break through his northern sector, he can definitely make a lot of ground. This is more open territory where the French can really stretch their legs with their tanks. I, I am surprised to see two artillery observer Shermans. Yeah, I'm I'm rather surprised too that they're, they're a decent unit. Also considering the French which don't have like Huge amounts oh, of like artillery. Of supply, yeah, yeah. And supply too. I mean, he's been using them rather efficiently, and also a decent player support unit. I personally don't take him, I'm not a big fan, but uh, her Robert's using them pretty well. They're also making some good plays down in this middle area now, moving some units here to try to break through, I'm guessing, the uh, German secret line. But it's just, that's just a lot of stuff he has to break through. He's got the AT guns, all the infantry, the remains of Falchager troops, and the Abra. I think it's going to be pretty tough cracking this middle southern sector, to be entirely honest. The Germans well, really does have a good defensive position all over. It is phase C, so here's the question. Are we going to see any kind of heavy anti-aircraft coming on out, or do you think it's just kind of, meh, we'll keep it for another time? Yeah, I think he's just going to stick with the Flak 36. He may have, you know, some Flak uh, 39s, I guess, Flak 88s, because I think, uh, mm -hmm. I forgot the actual, like, proper number. But, you know, it's a big bloody 88mm cannon that puts holes in vehicles. But I'm thinking it's just going to stick with the Flak 36s, to be honest, just to keep it, you know, nice and safe, nice and cheap on the budget. But um, it's really it's really down to uh, Robert to make a break for. He has 18 minutes to catch up to 1,054 points. He's going to need a plus run for most of the time, and preferably really a plus two to really take the victory here. Um, that Kubelwagen needs to repair that Stug right now. The Stug does claim the Sherman. Uh, the Sherman was able to stun it up with and actually cripple it yeah. with its first shot. Quickly, repair the poor Stug. He has served you well. Oh. But if he goes in now, he's going to get hit by an off-map artillery barrage. He, I mean, doesn't know it's coming. He does not know it is coming down, but that's kind of kind of fortunate. He's keeping a Kubel up here out of range of that off-map party. But what, actually, I feel like the the area of effect might even be able to pick it up. It'd be yeah. pretty darn close. He does not want that thing to make it out. <laughs> it's a little bit overkill here, but damn, he really does not like those dudes. I think he's going to wait for him to be fully suppressed and then move in the sapper to just bazooka it. As is, is a, it's, a, it's a literal shit and Oh, wow, he kills it with artillery. That's surprising. And it's not even like that big of artillery. It's 155 mils. Well, you know, just 155 millimeters of explosives. Um, to be fair, we're now seeing at long last that artillery piece. That would have been nice about eight minutes ago. Yeah, I, what, what type is it? It's the... Uh, it's it's one of the... It's, it's a big run. Yeah. It's a big Russian artillery piece. The, 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 the 396, I think that is. Yeah. But yeah, this is, this is going pretty good for her, Robert. He's kind of like making a push southeast kind of through this area and if you can get into this open ground like i said stretch your legs of the tanks and he's gonna have a lovely time and he's actually making pretty good progress in the middle it's got the five support with the bow falls and infantry keeping all the germans head down and yeah, the germans really need some more anti-tank capabilities knock out these half tracks and the church 
Uh, it's gonna be a Spitfire playground in a second here. Oh yeah. Why not? Oh uh, yeah, Oh no, they're peeling me after the ME one oh nine. Oh, that's good. That's good. And I've got a second measurement here, but he's fly flying, o flying over Allied territory. Now it's full four Spitfires, so I don't think those measurements are gonna make it out alive. I don't think the B three is gonna make it out alive. Uh, right, right didn't he pull back immediately? Right did he go back for like a second strafe and run out a little bit ballsy. Here's a question. Do you try to protect the ME109s more than the B3 or you try to keep the B3 up? B3, keep the B3 up. Good call. Because uh, it's more expensive and, you know, it's just, it's a very important unit, especially on this map to deal with the armored threats. But her Robert just has the critical amounts of Spitfires and S priority to keep the skies clean. That's the nice thing about the French. You've got a lot of Spitfires in your deck and they're nice, they're cheap, they're good fighters. You know, I'm not biased or anything, but they're, they're pretty decent. They're no pretty one would ever fighters. say that. No one would ever say that. Uh, nah. Nah. They are obscenely good at strafing ground targets. Yeah, I mean, you got 250 cows and 220 mils. It's not uh, Tempest levels, but considering you're paying like 125 points, that's... Uh, Let me guess. Decent. Let me guess. Cheapest chips? Cheapest chips. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Indeed. It is plus one over here for Herr Robert. He's slowly making up that ground. The scoreline says technically there'd be no victor here. Um, I don't know. My, I think right now Gonzo has still played a hell of a game with the 91st lift down there. Yeah, he's been. He he really threw all his um. I was, I want I don't want to say chips again, but like all his chips in early on, he was using all his high veteran units, and now he's paying it later by not having any Fouchagers or all his cool Fouchager infantry still alive. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, kind of losing those and, like, the forest advantage of the Panzer Shreks and whatnot. Yes, he can get AT guns and tanks, but with the Panzer Shrek squad gone and the Fouchagers gone, it's really just open, you know, open hunting season for these half tracks and light vehicles. As the Ursus Troop and gets spotted, by shooting like a French infantry in it. Yeah, they instantly suppress, and finally a bloody recon plane goes down. Yep. He only had a lease of life for way longer than it should have been in the first place, but yeah. eh, oh well. But yeah, the, the problem with Bonzo at this point is he's having a hard time getting his, getting anti-tank weapons, you know, on target with these uh, half-tracks and search. There's so many half-tracks that you have to kill, it's, it's, it can be a rather big pain in the ass. Well, we do have a, a um, oh, that's an, 88. an 88 coming in. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't think it's going to be the best call. Cool. Oh, no. Look what he's got. He's got guys right where he wants them. Yeah. The Death Star is clear to fire and a Martyr 2 as well. Oof. That's what he needed to do. And actually, that was the best one for him to kill. Exactly. And he's going to get shot in the off map. Nope. Misses. I mean, it'll lose uh, Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see second. it. But, um... Yeah, my other two be pretty decent. I mean, it's good cheap uh, fly support. But still, you know, it's not exactly a CQC king. No, but you can't be a chooser here. Like, the, the yeah, 91st perfect. definitely, definitely needs to have more anti-tank threats. And I think that might be why we're seeing the southern defense collapse as quickly as it did, is that so much of it is close in defense as opposed to at range. Yeah. Um... But with the Martyr 2, at least the Martyr 2 can entertain the idea, hold up the advance for a little bit longer, hold fair up point. the French from breaking in. Fair point, very fair point. Yeah, it's just... I mean, it's too bad there's not more of these Panzer Strike squads, because in this sort of territory, I mean, you see all these half strikes are so close to buildings and forests, it's just perfect to sneak in Panzer Strikes and, uh, you know, knock out some units. And now Horrible check out slow plus run, but really, he, he needs to get a plus two. He only has like a 52% map advantage. I mean, there's still like 12 minutes to go, so mm -hmm. it can still go anyone's game, really. Gonzo can maybe retake his Norman sector. You know, same time Gonzo's having a hard time just getting back in momentum. He's doing pretty good in the air now. Oh, for the love of God, get rid of that smoking Spitfire. Thank <laughs> no, no, there's more Spitfires, yo. Jeez. Yeah. Well, they're chasing one guy, and he's going to make it out, and I think... Oh, wait. Oh, oh man. Both of us, man. Don't mess with both of us. I mean, one when I was behind him, I was like, oh, yes, here we go. We're going to have an actual kill. Never mind. Nope. Nope. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, the Mother Smith's going to get out, which is a good for the Mother Smith. And now he's fit for either being shot out by the Flak 88. And, uh, yeah, the French are just really making their way in. And really, like, the French the French Chapers are perfect for this map. Just like I said, Jack of all trades, good CQC. They've got the anti tank, the HE damage. This is just, this is a really good French map in that regard. I mean, yes, he hasn't been able to use Wolverines or, like, well, really, Wolverines and 76 mil Shermans. But apart from that, it's just, it's just good Viva la France territory. As much as it grieves me to say, you're right. Yeah. And not because that you're right, it just agrees me to say that that's actually the case. Yeah, I, I like I like seeing the French right now. They're, they're definitely like more of a underpicked division by far. They're not, they're not as popular because they don't have like staying power. But mm -hmm. in good hands, like French can be absolutely devastating if you know how to use like vehicles efficiently. And as you see, her rover is using them bloody efficiently. Well, he's been definitely using the off-map Collins rather efficiently, and that's just basically yeah. I mean, this, you, your common steward, Remy, with uh, artillery. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually rather surprised that yeah. these 155mm off-maps have been performing as well. I always count these as, like, terrible. I mean, it's only 155mm. It's rare, rare artillery I'll go home when I usually play or pick my off-maps. But these Shermans have been doing really good, not just in the off-map artillery department, but in the, um, you know, fire support department with the 50 cows. And nice thing about him, too, is you don't have to, like, with a priest, you don't have to worry about resupply or, you know, rating for it to, uh, you know, get a target and shoot. You just kind of plop the artillery marker down, rate 20 seconds, and shit usually dies. Rinse, repeat a couple more times, and then yeah. at that point you have just, again, another anti-infantry platform. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's a uh, pretty good bang for your buck. I mean, that's 120 points, which is also, like, pretty... That's pretty good. I'm de definitely, like, an underrated unit now that I think about it. I'm gonna, definitely going to put some of these guys in my friend's deck next time I play. Now, the amusing thing for me is that the French have slowly... Their, their attack has slowly echelon down to the middle part of the map. Uh, yeah, I like how oh, the, he's realized that he just can't break through that northern sector. So he's just redirected his attack, you know, southeast, which is perfect. True, it's Napole quite really well. Napoleon would be proud. I just, I kind of feel myself wishing, and I can't believe I'm saying this in support of an allied division, but I can't help but wish he had done that so much earlier. I mean, like you said to the north, so many choke points. In the center part of the map, at least you do have a lot of these main roads to start working down. Your mortars yeah. would have been so much better placed shelling the orchard, easily allowing these jumping off points for later stages. Yeah, I definitely would have helped out early on as he was very fixated and taking at northern choke points and even now he is just as some defensive unit here but you got like a pack 14 it's like 3g and it's just one road northern side is just hell's high rate so good luck breaking through that if you can't deal with that armor threat and it seems like gonzo's trying to retake some ground and he's got like some grenadiers now and like one without Jager. well he did exactly what he needs to do which yeah. was move back to 5149 yeah, and you know, gone. So he just needs to uh, hold, hold his, uh, hold his ground, and just try to bring, yeah, try to bring it back to uh, an even Stevens, essentially. I mean, he's got out the even Stevens right now, but uh, it's still, it's going to be rather close, I have to say. And it's rather amusing too, because uh, you know, it's usually the French aren't really doing that well in A phase, but the French are doing it on point in C phase. Which surprises me, because I'm always expecting, like you said, the French should do well early on. Yeah, yeah, but it's just how, how the tables have turned. Like the French were playing the Pandelaire strategy. The hide, hide until P and hide until phase C, and then pretend to finally play? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, if when I play Pandelaire right, Khan, what I do is I start the match, I go away for 20 minutes, come back, I have, like, over 2,000 points, and I usually just buy, like, four King Tigers. The hibernation defense, you know, I, I know exactly, how, yeah, exactly. It's called the Battle of the Boat strategy. You know, bring the King Tigers out on the second rave, you know, but mine run, mine don't break down because they, you know, it's not 1944 late winter. Well, it's like the, the, the budget version of the Wizard of Oz. Tigers and tigers and tigers, <laughs> oh my. What are you doing? An unsupported B3, this guy's going to die in like are three you... seconds. Nah, go on. And it's just, it's just, well, I mean... Oh, wait, oh, that. wait, oh. bait and switch. There goes one. One. He shifts his attack run. No, he doesn't oh. really... What? 
There's no AA up north, so Not it's gonna anymore. it's gonna be kind. Okay, he's outnumbered. He's yeah. way outnumbered. And there's guys at ground fire as well. Okay, time it's time to extend for home. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. There's no AA up north for the Germans, yo. So it's gonna be there's only AA. It's a flank 88, and he has some. That's gonna be rather risky maneuvering it down here without getting shot. So he's just he's done fighting for his life. Well, the uh, Sherman on the ground is actually what the heck? Seriously, he's 50 paces away from the Stoke Three, who weapon jams him, internal fragments him, and finally kills him with the third shot. <laughs> Okay, ME109, it's time to go home. Yeah, no. Nope. Go home, boy, go home. No, he's, he's keeping the turn flight because if he, like, runs away, he's just gonna get chased down. So it's just, like, try to keep it in limbo instead of making a play for it. Well, worse than that, though, he has allowed the center part of the map to rupture. Uh, Martyr's dead. Black 36 is dead. Yeah. He's sending one of his last true tanks in a very, very blatant attempt to plug that gap. Yep, and that uh, her robot, he needs a plus too. I think he can do it, because he's making some good breakthroughs in the middle. If he can just, you know, get some more half tracks through, just fast move towards the enemy and capture some ground, he can take it, but it's gonna, it's gonna be close. But he has nothing up north. He has not. For, oh, yeah, he needs to try and plug it in, because it's dug free Gs. He's got a, uh, bazooka squad, uh, the French Le Marine something nonsense in, in French. Coming in to try and knock out the Stug Free. Something nonsense in French. I forgot the name. Let's see when I. Oh no, it's just a bazooka. I say bazooka. Even... How French of you? <laughs> it's not the fancy, like, French four man squad, huh? Oh my gosh. And now how the tables have turned. Oh my gosh, look at all that control. Can we see a plus oh. two for the Germans? Yeah, those, that bazooka squad doesn't, uh. What's it? Project territory, so. Yeah, that's not good for her, Robert. And I think a Stug 3G in the middle is just going to be enough to just keep her Robert at bay from, for now. Well, that Sherman is going to engage him, so... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, Sherman gets first shot. That's a bit, a bit sad for the Stug. Watch. Yeah, two shots, shot. two kills. Oh, no, tracks and wheels damage. Okay, this is the reverse. Last time it was the other way around. Another B3 goes on in. Into He's the... Being... Jeez, the Valley of Death here. If he's no falling back, five. that's enough. Just go. Oh, look, that's that cute little M8 that's burned through the entire game and hasn't inspired anything except 16 rounds of ammunition. Which one? Oh, like the one down south? Yes. Oh, yeah, he's just been, he's just been in, you know, picking apples. Um, Zoog teams at galore in the meantime. Um, and they're getting picked off one by one. It's a plus over here for Gonzo. I don't want to say that's it, but, um... I think actually, I think Gonzo's just that's too, it's gonna take uh, her Robert too much time to you know clear out the northern sector, and that's a that's a really good push here from Gonzo, you know relieving some pressure from the middle by doing that northern assault. I mean that Stug 3G definitely was really really saved Gonzo's ass, I'd have to say. Well, and I don't think the French have any more infantry. I think that's why we we're just seeing the Zook teams being brought in to desperately try to deal with something. Anything. Yeah, yeah, he definitely... I mean, it's nice that her Roberts managed to capture the town in the middle, but he hasn't managed to get past the town, and he hasn't managed to get past into the enemy territory, really, on his map, and that's really been her Roberts' downfall as... Yeah, now he's at the plus two for Gonzo. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a GG, really, for Gonzo, it seems. Now, I, I don't mean to be a dick here, but if I'm the Germans, I'm still extending those Flash Makers further and further to the edge of the map. <laughs> Gotta try and knock out the spawn point. Well, that for darn sure, but on top of it, too, you want to grab as much territory. If you do lose that part of your southern line, you want to be able to at least be able to claim an, an official victory, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think Gonzo's running out of infantry too. He's just sending recon squads. Or it's Fusiliers. Fusiliers are, are good recon tight. Squads. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're, they are just one of one of the best recon squads in game. But still, recon squads trying to take this town back. But he's just the friends of too much fire support on the town to really do do anything. And shockingly enough, Ulik, who's been down there, has used all three of his mines. Oh, and he's still alive. He, he won't be in a second. 
Yeah, it's a rather surprising event. I want to see it kill this at the end of this match, because that's pretty good being able to use all AT grenades. Something you don't see often. And, and by often, of course, he means folks ever. But ever, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's so satisfying getting an 18 a to kill you when, you, when it does happen. It just makes you want to start watching softball again, doesn't it? Yeah. Or have you ever played with Orchestra 2? Oh, that, yeah. You know when you're using yeah. the magnetic mines in that game, you like run behind a T-34, you slap it on, and you run away quickly before it blows up? Best feeling. Best feeling. So, I, I did enjoy seeing a lot of the Spitfires here. It was definitely great yeah. airplay. Yeah. By Herr Robert, but I, I think he tunneled a little bit too much in the northern part, and then yeah. echeloned a little bit too slowly. Yeah, he really sort of not put as much aggressive focus up north. I mean, he did. He sort of definitely spent the points up here containing Gonzo's, but he really sort of focused more on that middle area to try and break through instead, as that gave him more, you know, a bit more leg room here for his tanks to maneuver. And, and that, that last Sherman goes fight. down. Oh my gosh. And that's with one or two kills. <laughs> I guess not, because it doesn't look like the Allies are going to win this one. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, um, and yeah, we're going to be closing it out. What, about roughly 1,600, about 500? Yeah. A very, a very convincing Axis victory. Yeah, Gonzo just got that ground early on, held it, and, uh, you know... I wouldn't say he rode his lures to a late game, but he's on the plus two late game, so he's definitely managed to, you know, take that Oof. aggressive stance. And GG, and damn, that's a lot of kills. Yeah, there was no holds bar here at all. Yeah, that was, that's pretty close too, only like a 300 point difference, yeah. And looking at the history, yeah, a lot of the French stuff goes down early on, but half of me, yeah, it's pretty back and forth throughout the match yeah it's i'd say it's pretty even back and forth you know big blue and red patches next to each other some more blue patches of course because it's mm -hmm. a cheaper unit but uh that match was pretty good what did ulig kill oh ulig didn't kill anything he, he just damaged um he just damaged one of those uh m8s enough the m8 that was sitting down there the entire game oh. he just managed to disable it and then force it back that's it that's that's rather anticlimactic. He's no free AT grenades and not even manages to get a single kill. But it does check out with the normal kind of combat effectiveness of that particular system. So yeah, yeah, Spitfire, Daisy, Jeez. Mm -hmm. like there's also Marshal, by the way, too. That's which one? Marshal. It's uh, it's a command Sherman. Oh, oh, the command Sherman. Look at him. Like nothing out of flank ATA. It's Pretty ballsy, yeah. Marta 2, pretty pretty good kills, but not enough to win. <laughs> not enough to win. And looking at Axis. Mm -hmm. The Stu-42. Stu-42, Stu he was living the stug life. Or the Actually, life. he had amazing early kills that, that, frankly, I feel like if he had not killed those two mortar, uh, mortars early on, the northern flank could have been very different. Yeah, yeah. Those mortars were definitely, like, chipping away. At Gonzo and uh, Manson to knock him out definitely gave him some uh, good breathing room. But plus, my for the Germans, like Black 88 and like a Fauci get us pretty good and a mm -hmm. Stug 3G. Yes. But uh, yeah, it's pretty even now in terms of kills and pretty pretty evenly spread apart from one or two units. This is a really, really good play from both sides. I wasn't expecting it to be that bloody close. I thought her robber was going to take it. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely thought that too. I was like, oh man, yep, Rang's right. 91st has nothing left for infantry, and here comes the inevitable face he blowout. Yeah, but he's managed to, like, you know, pull out, you know, lint out of his pants, pant pockets, and, uh, no men to take the victory. Is that where he was pulling it out of? I was thinking of someplace far more nether region focused, but that's fair. <laughs> fair enough. But, um,. All right, so I think this coming Thursday we have something a little bit different, and I'm, and I'm sure we'll, we'll reveal the secret to that on Thursday. Um, but um, any last thoughts, Ryan? Nope, I'm good. Sounds good, folks. We'll see you on Thursday with some more Steel Division. I am Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.